What is good, Grey Gang? We're here today. If I look cold, that's because I am. I mean, last night I had a dream that I was in Narnia. I just walked in a stinking closet, and here I am. I'm not complaining, though, because we got stinking Rachel Raccoon out here. To be completely honest, I don't know if this is a girl or not, but we're going to go ahead and name it Rachel. Because you know what? Why not? Sounds like a pretty raccoonish name to me. Now, if you don't know the backstory with this coon, let me just tell you. The last video that I posted on my channel, I actually set some traps out pretty good ways away from my house. And a really far distance away from the nearest four-wheeler trail. Which means in order to check these traps, I was going to walk like half a mile to check them. But instead, I had the bright idea, why don't I just get my drone and fly it over here and check these traps. And so in the last video, that's exactly what we did and we discovered Rachel Raccoon right here. Can you believe that? That is thinking crazy crazy. So if you've not saw it already and that adventure sounds really cool to you, click on up here one of these two eyes and just check out that video first then you can always come back. But now that you know the backstory, let's get this guy out here. Or this girl out here. I don't know yet. We're about to find out. We caught him right here on a dog proof. He's actually coming towards me a little bit. Bear back up. I got in his trap circle. I didn't a good idea. <laughs> Raccoons are one of the most ferocious animals in the woods. Almost right up there with bobcats. But I'm going to have to put bobcats above them. If I had to be 100% truthful, I'd put a soaking wet bobcat right up against a big male raccoon, and they're about even. That's about the meanest combo you're gonna find. She's just a big old raccoon right here. Not sure if it's a sow or a male at this point, but right now she's actually trying to get to me. Wonder why, probably to grab the camera and eat it, but uh, yeah, pretty good looking coon at this point. Pretty nice. Really good fur. But enough talking, guys. I'm gonna go ahead, take care of this raccoon. I'm gonna dispatch it. Got my gun on right here. 22. Quick and easy. Best way to take them out, no doubt in my mind. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna skin it up, use its pelt, and then we're also gonna eat it. Now, I've done a raccoon catch cook not too long ago this year, but we're actually gonna cook this coon a little bit different, and it's gonna taste a whole lot better. Last time we fried it, I ain't even gonna tell you what we're gonna do yet for this guy. It's gonna be good, though. But anyways, guys. It's time to do what I gotta do. And so guys, we got the coon done with. Here he is. He's, she's not a big, I still don't know if it's a he or she, guys. I'm sorry, I ain't gonna check right now either. But for now, since we did name it Rachel, we're just gonna call it a she. But I don't, she's not as big as I thought she could have been. But even though she's not as big as I thought, that does not mean she's a small coon. Like I'm definitely, my arm is definitely gonna get tired. It is not used to hauling coons around. But it's a pretty good sized coon and definitely would have a field day on some turkey eggs. No doubt in my mind. And no doubt in my mind, she'll also taste really, really, really good with some potatoes. I came over this way to show you my other coyote trap right there it is you can't tell a lot about it it's not really set well because it rained a ton last night but now what i'm going to do is i'm going to head on back home take this coon back me and abram is actually going to eat it so me and abram's going to skin the raccoon and then we're going to cook it up and make it taste it all real nice i mean i'd like to show you the coon this is probably as much as i'm going to show to you if she did bleed a lot i don't know where i hit her i think i somehow got a headshot lung shot and heart shot i don't know how but i sure did dude it was wild no pain no gain i guess yeah here we go good old coon big stretched out coon I'm bleeding a little bit but that's okay that's just reality guys we're here to do education not to make a horror film gotta keep in mind guys this is just how it is and we're actually going to use this animal for every single thing we can including both the fur and the meat on this guy or girl. But anyways, guys, we're gonna go ahead and get old Rachel. And let's get out of here, guys. Let's get to work. Okay, guys, it is actually the next day. This is a new camera. So if it, the audio sounds different, that's why. It's just a new camera. Maybe it's better. Maybe it's worse. I don't know, but we're about to find out. But here is the coon. It is right here. It's actually the next day. So this guy is frozen solid. He is just, he is just the block right now. If you hear chickens in the background, that's because there's chickens right behind the camera. But anyways, we're gonna go ahead and get started in on this sucker. Now the knife we're gonna be using, it is the KG standard pocket knife, if you want it, available at kindergrade1.com. It's what we skinned the bobcat with not too long ago either. And we're gonna go ahead and use it to skin this old Rackham too. Now he is a little stiff. I'm gonna have to try to stretch him out here a little bit. It's definitely always easier to skin them when they're warm, opposed to when they're cold. Cause when they're cold, my goodness, man, they're just, they're stiff. Like this guy is stiff as a rock, but we're not going to let that stop us. We're going to go ahead, grab his heel, we're going to go right up through there, and right around the back, and then just pull him down just like I always do. The last coon I skinned was extremely fat, and this one right here, this one may be extremely fat too, but at the moment, I don't really know. There we go, all the way up to the heel. Oh yeah, here we go. Now we can pull down a little bit on this guy. He's stinking frozen. I'm not gonna try to lie to you. This guy's frozen right now. He's not the easiest to skin and pull. Bring it on down just like this. And now, son, we are getting somewhere now. The meat is starting to show. That right there, I'll try to get a little bit closer, 
That's the meat we're gonna be eating, guys. Right there on the legs, that's some of the biggest, the most pure meat you can get off of a coon. And now that we got it this far, we got it pretty well good up top. I can come down, pull it down a little bit more, exposing more of the fur and more of the meat as well. And we're just gonna keep bringing it on down as far as I can. We'll set the knife down right now for a second. There we go. There we go. Looking good, looking good. I'm gonna go ahead and get the camera, get a little close up for you guys. But here is what we're looking at, guys. It's overall pretty good coon. But here's the plan on the actual cooking part. Thinking about cutting him right through here, cutting it right through there, cooking this leg and this leg, and then cook it in a crock pot until it's easy, the meat's fully cooked, and the meat just falls right off the bone. That's what I done with the bobcat, and the bobcat was way better than I had ever expected. So I'll tell you what, guys, I'm gonna go ahead, put up the camera, cut off the back legs, then I'm gonna finish out the pelt, cause you know, we're gonna use it later in some kind of project. But once I get done cutting off the legs, I'll get back with y'all. So here we are, guys, we got everything situated, we got the hide put up, we got the meat put up, and then here's the actual meat that we're planning on eating today. It's both of the back legs. Now I just cut them off, I mean, pretty simple, still got some fat right here later in the day i can probably definitely cut that off before we eat it but overall pretty good size i mean it's a little bit bigger than a chicken leg chickens are just i don't know they're they're literally built to eat coon legs on the other hand i mean they're big and everything and they're kind of really awkward but there's definitely a lot of meat on there as we can see i mean let's be honest guys if i gave you this and told you that it was like a miniature cow or something would you believe me i figured it was a good possibility with like all the snow that we're having that this coon could have possibly burned off most of the fat but as we can see well, he didn't. But anyways, guys, if we look in the bag, you can see that we actually have two of those. Both of his back legs, his hams, I guess. We're not going to try to rush anything. It's probably going to take about six to eight hours because those, especially the back legs of any animal in the wild, they're really dense meat. Because if you think about it, that's what the animals use the most. Just like the bobcat, bobcats use their back legs all the time for climbing, sprinting, all kinds of stuff. Same for coons. They climb up trees on the daily. They have to have big, strong back legs. Therefore, because the legs are so strong, you're going to have to cook them for a longer amount of time for them to cook full. But anyways, guys, I don't think that's going to be any problem to us. I'm going to take these legs, and I'll tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and start cooking them because it's going to take a little while before they actually get done. And so here we are, guys. We have the food. It's done. The rack them and the taters. They are finished. So here's what we got, guys. We got some good potatoes right here. I think I honestly cooked them a little bit too long. Definitely cooked them a little bit too long, but it can't hurt, can it? Here is the straight up, um, uh, what do you call this? Rack em leg. I've got one rack em leg. Abram has another rack em leg. And we're about to eat them, guys. No, here, of course, what are you thinking? I'm thinking we go with some ketchup, you know, knock down some of the... It definitely looks like it's wet. It doesn't look like it's gonna be as dry as the bobcat. However, if you don't know me already, I literally eat ketchup with everything. Abram, go ahead and take your first bite. Tell us what you think about it. Tell us what you'd compare it to. Here's my first piece. Abram, Abram don't even want to talk after the first bite. He's already going in for the second. It's like roast beef. Yeah, uh -huh. it's exactly what it's like. It's weird because they're like not related to animals at all. I know. That's how that's how the turkey was. I mean, the bobcat. It tasted like a turkey, and it turned out being white meat. Don't I don't know if that makes any difference at all. Let me show you up close what it actually looks like. It looks like roast beef too. It looks exactly like roast beef on the inside and the outside. It looks exactly like roast beef. I feel like I'm sticking eating a cow or a pig or wherever roast beef comes from. Remember the fat, like the layered fat that was on it earlier in the video? Well, here's the cool thing. It actually just falls off, which is great. Oh my goodness. Look at that. It just falls off perfectly. Oh. What? Bone. <laughs> bone. That's one thing that roast beef does not have is bone. I forgot I was not eating roast beef. <laughs> <laughs> It's a big chunk of bone. That's a big old chunk of bone, too. I believe we're going to save that. I think we're going to do a giveaway. I think we're going to do a giveaway with this bone almost choked on. Okay, now I'm going to bring y'all in close. Me and Abram, we both finished it down to the bone, each of us. Overall, what do we think? Like, that's, ex that's exactly like roast beef. Here's the thing, though. You got to think about meat is meat to a certain extent. And in this scenario, we ate the back legs of a raccoon. With the roast, you're eating the back legs of a cow, right? So when you think about it, it's the same density of meat. And if you prepare it the same way, it's basically going to taste exactly the same. Now, I will say this did taste different than the bobcat. The bobcat was a little more stringy, but still good. This, however, was a whole lot more red meat, and it tasted... A lot more like beef. But now let me show you this piece of bone that I almost choked on. There it is. I'm going to turn it around just so y'all can see how big that is. 
That's a pretty big piece of bone. And it got, it got like halfway down my throat too, not gonna lie, and I had to hack that thing up. Eight out of 10. Eight out of 10? I'm gonna have to go with eight out of 10 too, just because, I mean, chicken's hard to beat. Not gonna lie, guys. KFC, they do it right every time. That's taking the 10 out of 10. And plus, you can't make something 10 out of 10, because then there's no room for improvement. First Thessalonians 521. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. You know, if you if you see something or hear something, you know, you have to test it. Investigate to see if that's actually correct. Don't just, like, make an opinion about something and then just run with it. Yeah, and whenever someone says the grass is green on the other side, how do they know? They don't know. They don't, they're not an agriculturalist. You gotta go check it out yourself. And not everything that everyone says is true. The second part of that verse, hold fast that which is good. So if you do find something that is good and you know it's true, then you hold on to that. All right, I'll tell you what, guys. If you're not subscribed already, go ahead and do that. And besides that, I guess I'll see you Monday. Another Kendall Gray video. And if you want to go buy some merch, check out kendallgray1.com slash shop. Hashtag Jesus. Hashtag Gray Gang.